So here we are, and I'm going to talk again about what people are calling the next little ice age, but I don't like calling it that, and I'll tell you why in a moment. And what I'm going to talk about today is sea levels. Um, I plan to talk about the effects of the 2024 cold period in my next few videos, um, but I'm going to concentrate on the effects that aren't all that obvious. So, here is a graph of temperature over the last 400,000 years or so. And this is the ice age we are actually in. And I say that because people find it difficult to believe that yes, we are actually already in an ice age. Where we were in is in an interglacial period. And here's the interglacial periods. There's a short one there, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and this is where we are at the moment. And you'll notice that it's actually not a particularly warm interglacial period, because here and here, we know that there was no ice at the poles. And in fact, the te temperature at the South Pole, certainly, which they have fossil evidence for, was subtropical. So think about that, you global warming people. <laughs> so this is the sort of temperature variation you get. We're in an interglacial at the moment, and the temperature of that interglacial is, despite what they're saying, declining. And the reason why it's all fuzzy is we have more temperature measurement points here than we have from ice cores and the like going back. In fact, as we go back, we've got fewer and fewer measurement points, so the graph is less detailed. So, that's what the temperature was like, but how about the sea level? Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. Whenever there is glaciation, the sea level falls dramatically. 130 metres, or thereabouts lower than it is at the moment and that's a lot and if we look at a map of the last ice age this is what the land looked like all green and as you can see it was possible to walk from Europe to America albeit if it would be an extremely cold walk because the ground would be covered with about a mile of ice but nevertheless it was possible and this group of mountains that you can see down here is in fact England and over here we have a stretch of land which now is in the middle of the North Sea which is quite a shallow sea and it's called Doggerland and if you google Doggerland you'll find all sorts of fascinating underwater archaeology that's been done in that area proving that people actually lived there and the reason they lived there is because it was really fertile, having once been part of the seabed in the last interglacial period. And then when it got colder again, it re-emerged. And it was a good place for people to live. As all of these green areas are, they're good places to live. Unfortunately, when all the ice melts again, they disappear. Because that's what's happening. You remember when you were at school you had the water cycle diagram up on the blackboard and the teacher was explaining how water evaporated from the oceans, went up and formed clouds, then it dropped as rain onto the land, it became rivers and they flowed back into the sea completing the cycle. Well, the bad news is during the ice age that cycle over the northern hemisphere certainly doesn't exist. The water comes out of the ocean, it falls as snow and ice on the land, and it stays there. This is why the ocean levels drop during an ice age. And even in a little ice age that's about 10, level, 10 years long, you're going to see a fair amount of drop. Maybe as much as a couple of metres. Now, why is this important? Well, some harbours only have a couple of meters clearance between the big container ship that's coming in and the sea bottom 
and some of those harbours such as New York Harbour are rock. You can't just go out with a dredger and dredge a deeper channel. You have to actually exclude the sea, blast it, take the rock away, which not only is expensive, it's time consuming. So therefore these harbours won't be in use if the sea level drops that much, which is something to think about. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video on the sea level changes during periods of glaciation and um, if you have please like share and subscribe and all those good things thank you very much bye